So now we can focus on the login logic. In order to log in, we will need login API. I'm gonna use fake API from the request in website. So from here, you can actually find some fake APIs and you can get fake responses. Here, if you scroll down, you can see here there is a login API, which allows us to send post requests. And inside of this login successful, there is a request body, which is going to be email and password. If email and password is correct, it is going to give us token inside of the response body. Now I will open this link and from here, I can use this API to log into my application. Let's go back to the VS Code. And inside of the lib folder, we can create data source. And inside of this folder, also we can create login data source. And from this file, we're gonna fetch this API and we will get the token. If there is some errors, there is a login unsuccessful and the inside of body, we will get the error. So that can be very useful because we can use it as an error message for the user. So I will create the class, which is named login data source. Inside of this login data source, we can create a feature method where we're gonna fetch this API. So I will say feature void and name it login. Inside of this login method, we can expect two parameters. The first one is going to be email and the second one is going to be password. Then let's start to consume this URL. Here, I will create a final property with URI type and the name of it is going to be login URI. Then we can use URI.parse method which is going to get this URL and parse it to the URL which we can use for login request. For sending this request, we will need HTTP package. We can use the command palette and here we can say start add dependency. And from here we can select HTTP. Now, as you see, we got dependencies, which means if you go to pop spec YAML, you will see that this HTTP is installed. So we can start to use post method, which HTTP package provides. We can import HTTP package, and now we can use post method. This post method requires URI and also the body of this request. So I will be using this login URI, and as a second parameter, I will be passing body of this request. For the body, we can create a final map of string dynamic. We can name it body also. So from where are we gonna get this body? We can get it from the request in. And here, if you click to this login successful, that's going to give you valid body, which you can send for the login request. I'm gonna copy this and come back, paste it as a value of this body variable. And lastly, we can get this body and use as a body of this request. This post method, which comes from the HTTP package, is returning response. So we can use this type to store the response because we're gonna need the body of the response and also we're gonna need status code, which is important. Here it is giving error because this post method is returning feature of response, which means we have to use a wait and then we have to make our method async. And in this case, we can store this response in our variable. Then we can check if the status code is 200 and then we're gonna allow user to log in. And if there is errors, which means if status code is not 200, in this case, we're gonna show error to the user. So we can use the if statement. And here we can check if response dot status code is equal to 200. In this case, we can do some actions. So we're gonna do it later. That's why I will leave it blank. 
if status code is not 200, which means we have an error, we can throw an exception right over here, and we can let the user know that there is an issue while logging in. Here, inside of exception, we can use hard-coded value, but I'm not going to use it because here, for the login unsuccessful, there is an error field inside of response body, which means we can decode this response body and we can get this error. This response is going to be JSON string. In order to get the value of the error field, we have to decode it and convert it to JSON object. So we can use JSON decode method, and that method is coming from the Dart convert package. So this JSON decode, as you see, parses the string and returns the object, which is JSON object. As a JSON string, we can pass response.body which is JSON string. That method is going to return a dynamic object, which means we can use dynamic, and here we can say response data. And now we can use this response data to get the error. Here, inside of exception, we can say response data, and from here we can say that get the value inside of this error field. For now, this login method is ready, but as you can see, email and password is hard-coded. Instead of it, we can use the email and password that we are getting as an argument for this login method. Here, we will say email, and as a password, we can also use password, which is here. This login method is going to be ready when we add logic inside of this if statement. 